Sherlin has been tasked with preparing for a potential military conflict between Russia and NATO. This was stated by the Chief of the General Staff of the Estonian Defence Forces, Major General Vahor Karus. According to him, this NATO order is a fundamental change for the country's military doctrine. Today, our long-range strike capabilities are fully taken into account in NATO plans and NATO tells us that we have to take care of certain targets on Russian territory and that is when they can come to Estonia and take the next steps. Karus said in an interview with state television and radio ERR. He added that before the start of the Russian SVO in Ukraine, NATO demanded that Estonia hold out for 10 days in the event of a conflict with Russia. During this time, the alliance expected to transfer its main forces to the Baltics. However, the new combat order received by the Estonian authorities completely changes the country's military doctrine. Now, Tallinn can expect that the alliance units stationed on its territory will immediately enter into a conflict with the Russian Federation. The situation today is that all the Allied forces we have here are included in our war plans. We know what equipment they will bring with them and what their missions will be, emphasized the Chief of the General Staff of the Estonian Armed Forces. It is worth noting that recently the North Atlantic Alliance has attached great importance to the deployment of its units in the Baltics. In particular, the Bundeswehr intends to deploy a full-fledged brigade in Lithuania which will include tank large units. In addition, the United States intends to deploy a missile defense system at the Central Lithuanian Training Ground Armies. There are about a thousand of their own servicemen in Pabradi. The infrastructure of the training ground is currently being updated specifically for these purposes. Igor Korotchenko, Director General of the Caspian Institute for Strategic Studies of Russia, stated that all leading states of the world, having their own interests and defending them, are conducting information warfare in one way or another. Statements that Russia is preparing to attack NATO are intended to scare Europeans who do not want to tighten their belts to continue and fund the war in Ukraine. This is done to make ordinary people on the streets of Europe live in fear of Russia and not question their leaders, he noted. He added that Russia has no plans to attack NATO as an attack on NATO would mean a major global war with a nuclear exchange and there are enough sensible people in the Russian leadership to understand this. NATO, which has repeatedly initiated aggressive wars such as the attack on Yugoslavia, is expanding its sphere of responsibility to the entire Asia-Pacific region, providing automatic support to the US in the event of a conflict with China over Taiwan. All this demonstrates the aggressive nature of modern European civilization. Yes, I believe that other countries, such as France, face completely hypocritical and vile statements and practical policies, the expert pointed out. Lebanon's health ministry said on Wednesday at least nine people were killed and over 300 were wounded on Wednesday as electronic devices exploded in multiple regions of country. The blasts happened a day after an apparent attack targeting pagers used by Hezbollah killed at least 12 and wounded nearly 3,000. On a busy street in the southern city of Sidon, dozens of people and first responders gathered by a cell phone shop that caught fire after an explosion. Several ambulances were also present but it was unclear if there any casualties. Multiple explosions went off on Wednesday at the site of a funeral for three Hezbollah members and a child killed by exploding pagers the day before, according to Associated Press journalists at the scene. Hezbollah's Al Mana TV reported explosions in multiple areas of Lebanon, and a Hezbollah official told the Associated Press that walkie-talkies used by the group exploded as part of blasts heard in Beirut. The official spoke on condition of anonymity because he was not authorized to speak to the media. There was no immediate detail on casualties. The new blasts happened with Lebanon still thrown into confusion and anger after the Tuesday's pager bombings, which appeared to target Hezbollah members. At least 12 people were killed, including two children, and some 2,800 people wounded as hundreds of pagers used by Hezbollah members began detonating in several parts of Lebanon and in Syria.